In this video, I'm going to talk about the mean value theorem, a physical interpretation of uh, this uh, theorem, and the special case of this uh, theorem, which is called the Rolls theorem. And I'm going to prove both uh, theorems, both the Rolls theorem and the mean value theorem. Let's get started. The mean value theorem states that if a function is continuous on the closed interval AB and it is differentiable on the open interval AB, which means that the derivative exists in this open interval, then there exists at least one number C in the open interval AB where the derivative at C is equal to this fraction here which is f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Let's understand this uh, theorem geometrically. So suppose we have this uh, function f here that is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and it's also differentiable on the open interval a, b. So differentiability means uh, uh, at any point between A and B, there is a non-vertical tangent line, okay, at that point. So what is this uh, fraction here on the right-hand side of this equation? This is actually the slope of the line that passes through the endpoints, A comma F of A and B comma F of B. So using the slope of formula, the slope of this uh, line here is just equal to change in y, so that is f of b minus f of a, all over b minus a. And this equation tells us that we can find at least one c between a and b, between these two numbers here, where the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line at c, is equal to this uh, slope here which means that the tangent line and this blue line here are parallel. So in this function f here, it seems that there are two values of c where the tangent line is parallel to this blue line here. And those are, so probably we'll get here a c1. So it seems that the tangent line here is parallel to this line. And another point, okay? let's say with x coordinate c sub 2 where again the tangent line has the same slope as this line here so here we have f prime at c sub 1 is equal to this slope and also f prime of c sub 2 is also equal to this slope now, let's give a physical interpretation of this mean value theorem. Suppose that this function f here represents the position of a particle moving along a straight line. Then, this slope here represents the average velocity of that particle during the time interval a, b. And the mean value theorem tells us that there is at least one t, in this case, t equal to c and then t equal to c sub 2, where the instantaneous velocity, which is actually the slope of the tangent line at a given point. So where the instantaneous velocity is equal to the average velocity during this time interval, a, b. You might also think about uh, the following situation. Suppose that you're driving your car and that you traveled a distance of, uh, let's say, 200 miles in four hours. So let's say that this is uh, four hours here. And the uh, function f represents uh, the distance uh, traveled by the car at time t. Well, if f represents the distance, then we would expect that the graph of the function f will be an increasing function. So we may have a graph that looks something like this. Okay, 
So it's an increasing function. So if you have traveled a distance of, uh, let's say, 200 miles in four hours, then that means that the slope of this uh, blue line here actually represents your average speed. So your average speed, if you traveled a distance of 200 miles in four hours, will be equal to what? 50 miles per hour. And the mean value theorem tells us that during our trip, there will be at least one time where the speed of the car is 50 miles per hour. So keep in mind that the slope of the tangent line at a given point here represents the speed of the car at that time. So the mean value theorem tells you that you can find a time during your travel where the speed of the car or the reading of the speedometer is equal to 50 miles per hour. Now, there is a special case of this mean valley theorem. It is called Rolle's theorem. So, uh, Rolle's theorem states that if a function is continuous on a closed interval AB, differentiable on the open interval AB, and the function values at the endpoints are equal, then there exists at least one number in your open interval AB where the derivative is equal to zero. This is just a special case because we have this assumption here where the function values at the endpoints are the same. And if the function values are equal, then in the conclusion of the mean value theorem, this is equal to zero. So zero over B minus A is just equal to zero. So therefore, F prime of C is equal to zero. And geometrically, it means that, as you can see in this case, function value at A is the same thing as function value at B. Then you can find at least one C in the open interval AB where the slope of the tangent line is zero or that means that the tangent lines are horizontal. In this case, we found two values of C. So at C sub 1 and at C sub 2, the tangent lines are horizontal. So therefore, the values of the derivative are equal to 0. Let us now prove these uh, two theorems here. So first, let's prove Rolle's theorem. So how do we prove this uh, theorem here? So let's write down the proof. So keep in mind that if the function f is a constant function, so in this case, if f is a constant function, like uh, f of x equals 5, f of x equals 3, and so on. So if this is a constant function on the closed interval a, b, then it follows that the derivative will be equal to zero, right? And this is true for any C, for every C, for every C in the open interval AB. Therefore, we satisfy the conclusion of uh, Rolle's uh, theorem. Now, suppose uh, F is not a constant function on the closed interval AB. So suppose F is not constant on the closed interval AB. So we know by extreme value theorem, so by extreme value theorem, by extreme value theorem, this function f here, since it is continuous on the closed interval a, b, then it has an absolute maximum and absolute minimum. It has an absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Absolute minimum on the closed interval a, b. And because f is not a constant function, so because f is not a constant function, it's not a constant function, then it follows that at least one of these extrema, 
So at least one of these extrema occurs at some C in the open interval AB. At some C in the open interval AB. This is true because we have function values that are not equal to f of a and f of b. And since we have an absolute max or absolute mean at this c, in this open in interval a, b, it follows that f of c is a local extremum, either a local minimum or a local maximum. So it follows, it follows that f of c is a local extremum. So when we say local extremum, it's either a local minimum or a local maximum. Now, since by assumption, we know that f prime of c exists because the function f is differentiable on the open interval a, b. So since f prime of c exists, Fermat's theorem Fermat's theorem tell us that the derivative tells us that the derivative at C must be equal to zero. So recall that Fermat's theorem tells us that if f of C is a local extremum, then the derivative at C must be zero or does not exist. Now, because we know that the derivative exists, then in this case, f prime at c must be equal to 0. Therefore, we have proven this Rolle's theorem. Let us now prove the generalization of this Rolle's theorem, which is the mean value theorem. So in this case, we'll be using the Rolle's theorem to prove this mean value theorem. So we need a function that has uh, same function value at the endpoints. And we can let that function to be this uh, function g here, which represents the difference uh, between f and this uh, line here that passes uh, through the endpoints. So it is clear that uh, the function value at a is equal to 0 because this is a point of intersection and also g of b is also equal to 0. So what is the equation of this function g? So let's uh, prove this uh, theorem here. So let g of x, so our g of x uh, is equal to, in this case, uh, f of x, and then minus uh, what is the equation of this line here? So its slope is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So that is the slope. And then times, you have here x minus a times the function value at a. So you may use just a point slope form of a line. Okay. So the slope of that line is just equal to this one, and this is times x minus a, and then plus f of a. Now, it is clear from this definition of g that this function here, g, is continuous on the closed interval a, b. Why? Because f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and this is just a linear function. It is uh, continuous and differentiable everywhere. So also, G is differentiable. So G is uh, differentiable on the open interval. So G is differentiable on the open interval AB. Why? Because F is differentiable on the open interval AB. And again, this is a linear function, which is continuous uh, and differentiable everywhere and what is the function value at a so and in this case you have g of a which is equal to g of b which is equal to zero 
And that is uh, clear from this one. It's a point of intersection. So even if you plug in the a here, so you have here a, so you'll get this 0, f of a minus f of a, that is equal to 0. And it's also easy to check that uh, g of b is also equal to 0. So therefore, g satisfies all the conditions in Rolle's theorem. So by Rolle's theorem, by Rolle's theorem, we can find at least one C. There exists C in the open interval AB such that G prime of C is equal to zero. That is, G prime of C is equal to zero means F prime of C minus the derivative of this is just equal to this one because the derivative of X minus A is just equal to one and the derivative of F of A is zero. So therefore, that is minus f of b minus f of a all over b minus a equal to 0, which is equivalent to f prime of c equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a, which is our desired equation. So this proves the mean value theorem.